Hello, welcome to Rob's Models, and today you're going to be doing an unboxing and review of something big, and it literally is big. It's in a big box, but it's also Airfix's big release, probably their one of their biggest releases uh, for quite a while, and definitely very anticipated. Now, this turned up, uh, it was yesterday this turned up, uh, so it's a pretty big box. It's about the same size as my cutting mat, which is an A2 cutting mat, just to give you an um, idea. Turned up yesterday, although it was something that I actually ordered back in November last year. And as you're probably fully aware, well, actually, let's open it up and find out. So, uh, literally, it is a brand new, haven't done anything with this. So, um, can I just get the scalpel blade in there? Run that along, and we'll see what we've got. I think we can probably already guess what it is. It's taken a while to come, and you can probably see it. I'll put it upside down there. But this is what we've all been waiting for. It is the oh, hello there. Airfixes one to seventy second scale. Oh, get that out of the way. One to seventy second scale. Avro Balkan B2 and uh, as you're probably aware Airfix released this they had one which has been out for a long long time old mouldings and for absolutely years people have been saying that they really wanted this is a massive box isn't it people have been saying they wanted a new Vulcan coming out because the old one it was popular because especially the last Vulcan was uh, flying around doing the air show tours a few years back really um, the popularity of the um, of the actual airframe was really popular but people were moaning and there's aftermarket parts and but people had to rescribe it and actually it was one of those things where I as well as other people said that Airfix would never do a Vulcan because they've already got one that people were buying why would they want to put their time and effort and money resources into doing something that they've already done so here it is and just to recap this is Airfix's Avro Vulcan B2 1 to 70 second scale and that is reference number A12011. Now before we get too carried away and this is quite a hefty box 1 to 70 second scale mine so it's going to be big now the box itself pretty much actually um, I'm wondering whether my uh, desk camera is going to be quite doesn't even fit in completely on there uh, but the size of this the box itself comes in at about 55 centimeters um, long by what's that going to be about oh, 38 40 centimeters tall so this is definitely a big box uh, let's see well actually first of all let's just look at it I mean to be honest this is um, <laughs> it's substantial in my hands it feels heavy it's you know um, built from well recently you know and that was a substantial sort of box you know cardboard sort of thing um and it was you know, quite big but this just feels solid and for a 70 second plane you know it's going to be big but let's look at the artworks first of all you've got the falcon and here it is coming across so you've got the anti-flash white on the bottom but the camouflage on the top and there's actually two different paint schemes um to be honest probably won't go through too many details on this because quite a lot of these details of what airfix has been pumping out for ages so if you've been interested in this model there's enough on there there's no point in me reading out stuff that you can just see um, and you probably already have read on airfix's website but there's the two finishes for it the original one which is of course in the anti-flash white uh, and that was before um, they realized that uh, the Soviet um, anti-aircraft missiles could actually reach up to the height that the Vulcan bomber could actually get up to. So they had to uh, rethink that strategy. They thought they'd be so high that they'd be safe that they ended up realizing going in low um, would have been the better approach and therefore it had the uh, camouflage on the top, still the anti-flash white on the bottom. So two different schemes. We'll go through those a little bit more in a moment. I'm just wondering how and if it actually we'll just show it there so they've got the two options of course if this is a bit blurry I'm going to be taking photographs throughout so um, those will be getting overlaid just to bear with you and of course you can go on to robsmodels.co.uk where of course uh, there's going to be more links and more details and more high resolution pictures so the first variant which is the with the camouflage top is the Avro Vulcan B Mark II and that is the Scampton wing 
and uh, that's numbers 2783 and 617 squadrons, Royal Air Force and 617 squadron was the uh, Downbusters one and of course that flew tornadoes after the Vulcan as well. So and that's based at um, England in 1966 and currently uh, it is actually preserved at the Newark Air Museum so if you really wanted to do your research you could do what Airfix did, go along there and actually um, check it out yourself and the other option is the Avro Vulcan B Mark II of course number 12 squadron Royal Air Force Cosingby Lincolnshire and that's the 1963 so as I say that predates that one when it was all in the white and just the nose section is preserved at the Avro Heritage Museum. And if we come over here, we've got a little bit of the blurb that just says, uh, as the Avro Vulcan entered, squad, um, entered squadron service with 83 Squadron uh, in 9, July 1957, Britain now possessed fastest nuclear capable bomber in the world. It seems strange to describe an aircraft which possesses such potential for untold destruction as uh, Britain's most effective peacekeeping asset. So yeah, got a little bit about that and we can see here, the length of the kit, when done, 450 millimeters, that's about 18 inches, foot and a half. Uh, width is about the same 470, so it's slightly wider than it is long, so you're probably looking at about 18 inches long, 19 inches wide, 277 pieces to the kit. Uh, I know it's a bit close to the camera because it's such a big box, it won't sit on the table. Um, so, as I say, we'll be doing high resolution photos and we've got reference number A12011. So let's open this up, bring you back in to uh, witness the tape cutting ceremony. So quite a chunky box, and we're probably about three inches thick as well. So we've got tape holding this on. And we'll flick it over. And you can see it as I do. Right, so here we go. One, two, three. And here we go. It's been a long time waiting for this moment, trust me. Not just waiting for it to turn up, but whether Airfix would actually do this once they announced it. One, two, three. There we go. Lift the lid off. And we have, whoa, a big box of plastic. And as I said, um, it's quite hefty. And you're kind of getting an idea of the size of what we've got in here. In fact, I think I'm going to have to bring you back onto the um, this camera just because I think this is too big for me to take out and really show you what we've got going on. So, we have a couple of sprues here. Now, that's the wing parts, and you can kind of get an idea. We'll go through them in a moment properly, but you can see that's going to be a big chunk of uh, wing. They're probably about spaced, probably if it's 40... They're actually about spaced out, oh, missing the fuselage. The spacing on that is probably about right. Oh, to smash it up before it even starts. Got the blue steel missile. We've got these, they're actually all bagged up. Now one of the things as well to uh, mention is it does say uh, in Airfix's information about this uh, particular kit that they've done the sprue layout in a way that what should be happening is you should work your way through it in a methodical way so they've tried to group things together uh, not like you're then hunting around trying to find part 13 then you're trying to find part 47 on a different sprue uh, it should be in a way that makes it easy to follow through and to assemble so we've got right the way through we will start with the instructions first of all and Let's take out decals actually are uh, uh, tucked in the instruction as well as painting instructions. Normally, uh, decals, really just the decal sheets, just seem to be a bit on the running around the bottom. Um, and we've got two different versions of that, so they've done a decal sheet for each, uh, or um, painting instruction guide for each. So let's look at the um, instructions first of all the Avro Vulcan B2 and a uh, little bit of information on here uh, just going through about the uh, being capable of carrying a special payload i.e. when it was um, Air Ministry requirements wanted it to carry a special payload of 10,000 Imperial pounds basically a nuclear bomb that was uh, Britain's first you know nuclear deterrent the, um, the V-Force bombers 
and we're going up to 143 over 28 pages. So let's have a look. First of all, the standard information there of your um, assembly instructions. So where are we starting? Cockpit. And uh, you can see it's just going to be basically building up the cockpit parts. Uh, these were well, such a big, uh, su such a big plane. There was a still um, a very cramped, tight cockpit, which is you know surprising. It was really, really tight. Chairs just coming together. That's, actually, I'm surprised. Actually, I was going to say that's a bit moulded, but we are in 70 second scale. I was thinking about the size of this kit. Some of those details are going to be small. So, putting in the two main pilot seats there, the little ladder coming in. Put all this together. We haven't got any options on anything yet. The few seats that go in there, so the reverse crew seats for the navigators, and then coming together. And then we do actually have our first options here, which is for the crew door being open or closed. If you're going to have some little adjustments there, the crew would get in at the bottom, climb up a ladder to get in. So that all gets enclosed in your front section. So there we go, you've got your front section there. Uh, one thing to notice is although the windows are quite small, the, um, the top part actually all seems to be one big clear part, so that will be a bit of masking needed there. And here we are. For the A scheme, so that is with the camouflage scheme, it's just saying here, uh, cut and file away the areas shown in green. So that will be taking away some of those parts, so that will be you know, able to fit the, uh, the blue steel that big nuclear device so that's an option no doubt that will be have score marks to actually cut out quite easy that will come together so we're just building the bomb bay on there got some very big sort of uh, struts and sprues going across some spars that's really going to be holding that in um, you know to make sure as time goes on those wings don't start sagging building up all those struts, the curved struts going across there. You can see they're red because we've been pre-building them and then building that delta wing shape. Actually, one thing just to notice here, I've just noticed, uh, I, I'm assuming it's going to be molded in, but you've got numbers one, two, three, and four for the engines. So I'm guessing they're going to be numbered later on to make sure you get the right ones in the right place. But we're just building quite a crude sort of um, spa system there. But, oh, actually, we can see here, that's got numbers three and four on there. So I'm guessing it's just making sure when you're using the spars, it could be quite easy to get them the wrong way around. So you'd make sure they just line up with each other, that they're in place. Uh, got a few options here, which is really gonna be for if you're looking for the gear up or down. And again, if you're gonna be going for the A variant with that big blue steel missile, actually, you've got, um, gonna have to be taking away a bit more of the Bombay doors. Okay, that'll be why that was taken because that's going to be quite a big unit there. So that all's coming together. Um, note only the B scheme, just bring this here. Only the B scheme should be built with the Bombay doors open. Okay, the B scheme is that one which is the all white version, the 1963 version. To build this option, miss out steps uh, 33. A, B and 34 A and B. So if you're building the second variant, don't bother with this. Uh, you'd be moving straight over. This is because there's going to be a recessed um, plate, effectively no bomb bay on there. It's just really a, a recessed part for that big blue steel missile to go into. So that's handy to know. There's that section. You can really start getting an idea of scale of how big this thing's going to be as all that starts dropping in. And then we come over, that's all stuff, really subsections going in. You're gonna to want to make sure that's all glued in nicely. Here we go, some more text actually. Uh, if building this model with the undercarriage in the up position, i.e. in flight, fit part D32 in this step and miss out steps, well, basically the rest of this page. So if you're, this is all for building with gear down. If you're just um, building it with gear up, um, then you just put over the gear doors. So the fact that we're going through quite a bit of detail there uh, should mean that we've got quite a nice bit of interior here. Oh, this looks a little bit interesting here. We've got a little template. Note for the A scheme, again, that's the camouflage one, before assembling uh, the parts and steps 46 and 47, so that's basically uh, this page, um, cut out and use the paper templates 
below to mark the front edge of the white painted area inside the engine air intakes. So there's going to be a masked areas just inside, just where they're sort of red. And what it's asking you to do is to cut those out and use those as templates to uh, mask up the air intakes, just so you've got the white on the inside. Uh, whether you want to do that, you could, if you don't want to be cutting up your instructions, then of course what you can do is you could photocopy these on a one-to-one, -one, or if you're just going to be careful with the Tamiya tape, but actually it's nice for them to include that. I mean, it's going to be inside, so it's not going to be quite as visual, but it's good. I've never need, you know, never seen that, in, especially in an Airfix kit, just telling you which surfaces they go on. Note there is an option to fit the cover at this stage of the build, so you can actually fit a cover. So if you're having it with gear down, and it's just going to be effectively on display, you've got the FOD covers, so actually those can be built and painted and dropped in instead. So if you are doing it effectively to replicate exactly as it is on display at Newark uh, Museum, you can do that. Oof. Uh, so that's dropping in those engine parts, I mean these are the engines that also powered Concorde as well, lest we forget uh, little uh, lights, top part of the wings coming together, I mean this is going to be a huge huge play when we're only halfway through the construction and there we go, finally now we're sandwiching the two parts together, so all that interior, all those reinforcing struts are based in that bottom part, we're building that in upside down and flipping it over. Then of course the nose section comes on, so you are doing this in parts, and as they come together, and of course it's going to be in this little area in here, actually on the, the top bit, where you're going to have that uh, masking. So that's why it's saying put that in now, that would have been a lot easier to do that masking um, at this stage before it all gets sandwiched together, then trying to get the masking tape in there uh, once it all comes together. And then the tail part coming here, um, more text, I've never known so much text in instructions here. Part E, which is um, a rear part, uh, must only be used temporarily as a jig to accurately align, so the engine nozzles, okay? So don't glue that on, that's very handy. They obviously they're going to be um, floating in a way before you put the glue and there's no sort of like clicking in place. So yeah, you're using these parts as a jig just to hold that into position. We've got the numbers one and two on those things, just making sure that people don't get confused. Uh, so that's handy for our fix, just to realise that there's going to be potentially some wobbling around. So they've um, got that, put that on, wait for the glue to dry, and then the same on the other side. So you now end up with the exhaust nozzles. And I'm seeing that they are numbered again. I'm assuming they're going to be similar, but not quite the same. So to avoid confusion, there's just uh, slightly differences on the port and starboard side, so they have just numbered them. A few little lumps and bumps going on. Uh, so this is coming together, and that's for different variants, just some fins at the back. And again, that would probably be air deflectors for that massive blue steel missile that's slung underneath. Then the tail comes together, ah, that actually that's quite nice, you have actually got movable poseable and it shows up to 30 degrees either way you can go. So you can have poseable rudder which is nice, build up that rudder fin separately and also, and this is very nice as well, you've got the flaps and aerolons and those are separate parts so you build up and it's showing you the degrees of movement. So as well as the rudder 30 degrees either side, you can see these, uh, these main flaps there, ten, either 10 degrees up or to 22 degrees down, and those other aerolons up to 12 and a half degrees up or 27 and a half degrees down. So that's actually quite nice. So that's giving you the, um, if you're putting up together and you're put, posing them, you know the limits, uh, which is, um, yeah, quite interesting actually. Never seen that before again in an Airfix kit. Landing gear coming all together. So quite a lot of, uh, that going on, sub assemblies, building this all up, looking very detailed. Landing gear essentially repeating the same on both the port and starboard sides. Uh, coming then together here, front landing gear, and again if we had had the doors then you'd just be putting the doors over it. Bombay, so you're building up, if you're going to be doing the B variant, which is the all white, but with uh, traditional standard munitions, thousand pound bombs, you're going to be putting those together. So they just, um, not individually, it looks like you're building up little racks of them. 
So they will go in there. So that actually would look pretty interesting. However, I'm, I'm, it's going to be the balance between having an interesting build, maybe with the Bombay doors open and showing off the racks of the thousand pound bombs, but it would be basically quite a plain white model versus um, having a more interesting camo scheme, but having a blue steel missile underneath. So here we go. That's a little bit more on the B variant. Air brakes uh, dropping down as well. Here's the big blue steel missile, and what happens is that fin folds over, so that uh, just the uh, that bottom fin flips down, and then when it's uh, when it's launched, that, oh, it's, no, the, sorry, the top fin, so it uh, rests against the fuselage, and then it will ping up when it is dropped, and you can see that the, the bit the recess that it goes into, and then finally. On the back, a few other little lumps and bumps there, a few little flaps so you can have the air brakes up or down. So you can see there you've got the access ladder for the crew so they can get in and it's also showing you at what angle that would drop down on just to make sure you're getting that right. And there we go, lumps and bumps and um, yeah, refueling probe for the A version as well. So that is quite a book there I would say. Uh, we've definitely got quite a bit to read, <laughs> well quite a bit to go, uh, actually I was going to say it's um, quite a bit to read, uh, but genuinely there is a lot of text in there telling you about the different things and those little um, templates to cut out uh, various options in there, uh, they made it quite clear, some people do get a bit confused, I have found on different Facebook groups, just with models in particular, with the different variants and people go, well, why would I do this, or what option, not quite realising, it's obvious when you know, but um, there'll be people probably buying this kit for the first time, uh, for, the, for their first model, just because it is the Vulcan. So let's look at the paint schemes and the stencil data first of all. This is the stencil positions for the A scheme, and to be honest, they look pretty similar still similar number of stencils in the same sort of place but there are going to be some differences especially when it comes to the munitions. Now you can see this is the coloured version for the paint scheme for the B variant and actually it, they might as well have printed this in black and white for all you can see. Uh, pretty much the only colour on there is the round doors which are decals and uh, a few little patches here of brown patches and that's pretty much, oh, and uh, some black. And that is really, you're literally white with a few bits of black on and even fewer parts of uh, matte okra, uh, 63 and humble. But apart from that, you're literally uh, black and white. But of course, you'd have a bit of uh, green, dark green on the bombs. Flicking over, now there's a bit more color on here. This is the um, camouflage pattern, which is essentially very similar to the kindest camouflage patterns you'd have been finding on Spitfires, those sort of colours as well. And of course going on into the um, Tornadoes as well, that sort of um, colour sort of scheme. So it's the medium sea grey and the dark green. That's the main on the tops, on the bottom, still got the white, the anti-flash white. A little bit of black on there for where the engines are. Well, actually that'd be the gunmetal but definitely a bit more interesting on there and as it's going to be a big lump you probably will be wanting to go for that because that is going to be a lot more um, eye-catching and still a few other little of the matte aqua brown parts on there as well so that should be good good sort of camouflage pattern on there some few nice squiggles and of course uh, if anyone's watched that bond film you only live twice is that the one um i, th I think it's yeah tomorrow you only live twice um, where they steal the Vulcan and you'll know just how good that camouflage is when you put a net on it and you um, sink it somewhere in the uh, Caribbean Sea. And whilst we're on the uh, close-up camera, we'll look at the decals. I've got to say, um, and I know I've said before recently, Airfix decals have really come on and they are my favourite ones at the moment. Um, yeah, they do go down really nicely. They don't feel thick, um, not as thick as Tamiya ones. Uh, you put a little bit of the... Yeah, um, the micro set, the micro sole on there, they really bed down nicely. So, um, yeah, these are looking really nice. Uh, hardly, yeah, hardly anything to them. Good colour, good orientation, no bleed through from the white, everything is aligned, and everything you want in the decal sheet. There's not massively loads of them, to be honest. Um, you know, 
done a lot things a lot worse with a lot more. So um, you can see that the A version with the camouflage, it's the more bolder colours and more muted for the um, anti-flash white one. So even though it's going to be all white, even the decals that you do put on to add the colour is still going to be quite muted down. So that is looking good. Let's get rid of this and start going on to what you're really here for, the sprues. So let's start at the top. This is the first one coming up and this is, I'm going to have to come out a bit just to get that fit in. And this is um, big. Okay, but this is giving a good idea of the size of what we're actually going to be looking at here. So it's nice actually Airfix are getting round to putting um, sprues in separate bags. Uh, I say separate bags, this has got the um, bag, uh, yeah, you know what I mean, they're putting different bits. Why can I see something in the bottom of that? No, nope, that's just a little bit of a... Oh, <laughs> I thought someone had snapped off in transit there. Ah, and we've got little clear parts there, so we'll come to that in a moment. So that is going to be the top part, and these bits would click directly into place, but you can see just how big they are. And they are pretty, pretty big. Now, what we're really going to be looking at here, and this is pretty much, uh, this is what separates uh, really this kit from the old kit, the old Airfix kit. And a lot of people saying, oh, I've done the old one, it's great. You know, you don't, they, lots of people do say that they enjoy this one. And Airfix have really gone to town and trying to promote what makes this kit different by making sure that the people who built the models um, that they've been using to advertise it have really gone to town on using the panel liner because we have recessed panel lines. Um, it's made out of typical, your, your normal Airfix plastic, which is a little bit softer than your Tamiya ones. However, I don't mind. Um, it, it should be fine, and it's still crisp, and it's still good plastic, you're getting the detail on. Now, let's actually bring you with the close-up cam. Oh, there we go. You can see what a mess in my office at the moment. Uh, I'm not too sure how well that's going to be picking it up, but we've got plenty of panel lines in there. And again, uh, taking high resolution pictures, which will be overlaid on this, which you're probably looking at how I'm doing this. Uh, similarly, they will also be on a website, robsmodels.co.uk. Now it does look like in transit, or was it me just banging them around, but those have actually come off, but that's that should be fine anyway. I can file that down and normally put a little bit of filling on there, but brand new kit. Uh, first thing to say, obviously, there's no flash, no um, no sort of sync marks or anything that I can actually see in there. So we are looking good on that front. And if we flip it over, actually we can also see you've got the recessed ribbing now in uh, where the top of the Bombay is going to be. I've got to say though, these panel lines are very thick. Uh, they're not fine by a, a long shot. I don't know whether they should be fine. Um, they are quite thick and recessed. For, especially bearing in mind, this is one to 70 second scale. You've got to realize that this is some big, thick uh, panel lines going on in here. And uh, if you've actually seen those uh, promo pictures, the promo models, uh, the, their builders really did go to town with the panel liner to really show that these are recessed panel lines. Um, I'm just thinking they might be, if anything, a bit too big. There's not really much in the way of fine detail going on here. Um, I mean, yeah. So I think something like a Flory Models wash uh, will probably work actually just as well or better, or you're making up your own oil wash will probably work probably better than the Tamiya panel line type wash or that sort of thing. Um, because that might be a bit too fine. But anyway, am I being picky for the sake of it? Probably. Am I just finding problems for the sake of it? Well, it did cost 60 quid, so why not? But let's look at now the underside. And I've got to say, actually, again, panel lines, I was going to say they look a bit finer, but they are still quite pronounced. But then actually on the underside, now the um, finer details, as what typically tends to happen, you have got more finer riveting 
and it's probably not even going to be visible on there unless it catches the light. I'll try to get it a bit more visible when taking pictures. But the main panel lines are quite deep, but some of the more smaller parts, and definitely that is some fine sort of riveting, some finer hatches going on on the underside. It's always typical, I found like that when like building the mosquito, um, the the top side hardly any detail on you flick it over to the side that no one can see and um, then yeah that's where perhaps the um, I'm just <laughs> that's just thrown me um, got some ejector pin marks but they're covered in a um, they're almost burnished hmm I've never seen that before there's no effect on that side I'm just thinking these are just so big I mean, this could be one of the first kits because off the run, so there's no release agent on there, but maybe it's just sort of been slowly burning off. It's uh, yeah, definitely where each of those ejector marks are, but it's uh, absolutely invisible. There's no stretch lines, no no mist molding or anything on there. Um, it almost looks like they've been filed. I can actually, it actually looks like they have been manually rubbed down. I can see little sort of scratches in there, hmm, which is unusual. But maybe with a cut, and it is a thick, thick, I mean this, that's not thin plastic, that is thick plastic. So maybe just their quality control, they just want to make sure that actually, you know, those bits really do get taken down. So that's good. Uh, I was going to leave it to last, but as it's here and it was in that bag, We'll have a look at the clear parts. Now, the clear parts are mainly going to be, actually, let's bring in a little bit tighter on here. First, uh, it's gonna be little lenses for landing lights, those sort of things. Now, most of this, although it does actually look a good canopy, it's nice and clear. Um, and you'd, I'd be looking at this if this was like an Airfix um, Spitfire sort of thing, it's more of a Spitfire canopy, you'd be looking through it and actually, I would be then saying that looks quite crystal clear to start off with. However, there is a bit of distortion to it, but fear not because all of that is going to be painted. The only bits that actually you're going to be able to see is going to be, oh, and I can see we have actually got window wipers molded in. It's going to be those front five panes and the two circular porthole windows either side. Uh, the rest of that, but they've obviously done it in one piece, so you get a nice clean fit, and that, that can mould in, so you're not going to be having uh, yeah, any sort of fit lines that are, are more obvious, and issues trying to get that to go in, because it was all going to be moulded all, all in, it's not like a, a lifting up canopy. So, although initially you might look at it and go, that actually has got quite a bit of distortion and it is, I've got to say, it is a bit thick, it, that is all getting painted. The actual windows that you're seeing through uh, are small and that's also notorious for such a big aircraft. The, the crew compartment was so small and visibility sort of so bad in there. Um, the actual amount of detail in the cockpit you're probably not going to be going too overboard with because you probably just literally won't see and of course you have no option to have um, to have it open of course there's, there's not like a, a cockpit that you can um, open up to display the insides so that's fine that does the job it is actually good it is really nice crystal clear plastic although that's not really going to make too much difference for us Let's get the other big sprue out the way. Now this one is actually probably bigger than the other one. This is definitely the, the biggest of the size sprues. Pretty much fills up the bottom of the box. But this is more for the uh, internal parts. I guess there's a few of the external sections here, some inner bulkheads. Let's actually have a bit of a bit more of a look. So let's start off here. Internal parts got a bit of pipe work going on as well so that's going to be inside the gear bay. So you've got this bit of that will actually um, 
the quite nice raised detail on there, those hydraulic pipes. So you're able to dry brush them to pick out the, the colour on them and then maybe a bit more metallics on them, maybe to add a little bit of wear, add a pin wash and actually you're going to get quite a lot of that to jump out quite nicely. And again, details here. Uh, some of that is very fine there but some of that is looking quite crude almost on there. But that's not to say we are looking at late 1950s technology when this was getting built and uh, it wasn't always quite the fine detail. And, but then other parts, little wiring coming out of these boxes that's looking good. I've uh, got the fans there as well and actually you've got your two main light layers on those fans uh, with smaller blades behind those top blades. Finer detail. So this, if you're building the first variant with the blue steel nuclear device, this replaces the Bombay doors and this is basically the hollow that the, the blue steel actually uh, slots into and um, actually the detail the recessed detail on here is finer than it was probably on the wing sections or actually I'd say it's more in keeping with the finer detail on the wing sections little vents looking good and then as we come across here we've got that spar that's going to come running across now the thickness of that plastic on those wings should mean that you shouldn't have any bowing but the fact that you're actually going to be building up and then we've got some you know some of the wing spar bits as well we've got the numbers on there uh, just cor cor correlating to which engine are to make sure they go on the right way around so that will add a little bit of structural um, sort of yeah basically add structure to it and again these parts here those are numbered uh, they would add structure to the main that that ribbing would be structural in the aircraft but i'm guessing they're going to be adding structure to it to the actual plastic model as well and more details on there so on those bulkheads overall uh, not a huge amount of detail on there but the detail that there is on there where it's needed to be is quite fine so yeah got some very fine electrical and hydraulic cabling just running around on the back side there is plenty of ejection pin marks I mean this is going to be a big sprue that needs to get pushed out so um, none of that is affecting obviously no flash so insides of these air takes are really nice and smooth there's no ridges or dimpling effect from those ejection pins on the other side here plenty of little um these little tabs which are used to be pushing out the molds as well but this is an internal part that you're not going to see anything that is external anything that all that would be visible through hatches and doors that is all looking uh all looking fine they really thought about where to put those ejector pins and often using these little side bits just to make sure that it doesn't have any effect and uh yeah, even bulkheads and things, you've got the little recessed I mean, uh, round holes in there which you could either put a wash in or perhaps even drill out completely if you wanted to just to really add that um, weight saving girder sort of feel to it. But that sprue, uh, that's all looking good and yeah, I've got to say those engines, you know, intakes should be, you know, they're, they're all nice and smooth actually. So you should get quite a nice view going down into there and it will just be on these parts the upper side whichever which one they would be where you'd be masking up with that white as well quickly going to cut in here just to point out that when i was editing i realized that the second part of this unboxing had some really bad audio problems so what i'm going to do is reshoot that part it's just the last couple of sprues um i just want to point that out because if it takes on the bags and they've already been opened that's why this looks like this is actually going to be the cockpit part so if we take this out so here yeah we can see we've basically got two parts to this sprue this is the front section so we can see when they said it's actually going to be quite modular that pretty much everything you need to do those front sections everything that gets encased within those two halves of the fuselage should be here and then this section looks like if you're doing the B variant where it's going to be the thousand pound bombs with the bomb bay that will be here so well, actually let's start with this because this this section is going to be uh, necessary for both options 
So let's start with the cockpit. So of course you've probably much got the uh, cockpit floor of it, the main tub, shall we say. Uh, so yeah, that looks fine. That's where about those seats are going to go. There's the access for it. Front and rear bulkheads for it. And we have got some detail on there. I've got to admit the seats kind of, I was going to say they look kind, kind of plain, those uh, seats there, but saying that you've got the uh, pilot and the co-pilot one with the straps already moulded in, and they do actually look quite fine. For 70 second detail, those moulded in straps that you've got, those harnesses, should be absolutely fine. Pick them out, uh, maybe a little bit of dry brushing, just to accentuate the details. You've even got rudder pedals as well. Uh, to be honest, I don't think they're going to be visible, but they are there and the control sticks some of the seats actually do look a little bit plain but to be honest they're not going to be visible at all to be perfectly honest it's one of those things where you're going to be building up taking photos to share on social media no doubt however once that uh, main canopy goes over uh, quite a lot of that detail is going to be lost and that's probably why they haven't really gone to town massively on the detail uh, with the instrument panel no raised detail on that that is completely flat that'll be a decal going on but again likewise it's going to be pretty much nigh on invisible apart from those two small circular porthole windows in the side to peer through and it'll be so dark in there i doubt you're actually going to be able to see anything but i've got to say for the detail that is in there that is actually looking quite nice actually you know not massively detailed but to be on a 70 second scale kit uh, you're not going to be able to open the canopy up. I think that's going to be perfectly acceptable. No real sink marks or anything in there. The ejector pins, and that means that that is actually quite flush there. So uh, that's good. And um, we should have actually one small imperfection, two small imperfections. Is actually pretty much on this nose comb. There is a little bit of a definitely a dip in there, and not so much on the other side where those little location tabs are uh, so that definitely will need a little touch of filler not much i'm really being quite picky there just to smear over but what you're probably going to be doing anyway is when you're putting these two halves of the fuselage together you'd be um, just running a little bit of filler down anyway just for the seam line just so you do have a perfectly rounded one and whilst you're there you will put a little bit in there but that's the first little sink mark i've seen actually on the main parts, none there. Uh, actually, what is quite interesting here is looking at it, we do actually have two different uh, nose, um, well, two nose cones. The second variant doesn't have the, oh no, sorry, the well, chronographically, the um, chronologically, the first one doesn't have the in-flight refueling one, so that's the B option. That one does, but it looks like there's two different um, in-flight refueling probes there. Uh, which is quite odd because I think you'd only be using one of them. There's not an option for the both, but it might mean Airfix have kind of future-proofed a potential another variant, which would be quite interesting if they have. Uh, but that is all looking fine and good. And coming over, these thousand-pound bombs, they're sort of moulded in the rack, so you're not going to be making up each individual one as they stack as sort of like a little mini pyramid. You've got a stack of um, four, then a stack of three go on. So it's not like you're making up each individual one. And bomb bay doors in the closed position there. And then actually, uh, internally, yeah, so that would be the inside. We have actually got... Um, I thought I just immediately jumped to it. I thought those were large ejector pins, but no, actually there's gonna be uh, two little round clear parts gonna go in there. I uh, had a little bit of a minor panic then when I thought, um, yeah, I thought that just means some massive ejector marks. And actually what's quite nice there is there's a little arrow uh, just embedded in there. And that's actually just gonna help for lining it up um, because actually it looks pretty, um, yeah, um, sort of symmetrical, but actually that contour, that raised contour does actually shallow as it goes along. So just to make sure that when you're doing it, you do put it in the right way around. I mean, it should be quite obvious, but the fact they've put a little arrow just to make sure is quite a nice little touch. Next screw, here we go, is um, actually this tree has kind of got three parts on. So uh, let's 
flip it over. Yeah, lots of ejector pin marks going. Okay, let's look at each of these individually. Now, first of all, this part has got, because um, I'm intrigued by what's missing, is probably the best way to put it. It's either a sprue, which I don't think we've already done. No, there's no other sprue. But this part here is a little bit wobbly, so we'll be careful. That's got your FOD covers on. So if you're going to be doing it literally as it is in the museum at the moment, it will have the FOD covers over those engine intakes. So that's useful. And looking at them, there is actually some very fine detail on there, more for the handles uh, to lock them in. And these are the air brakes and the little lumps and bumps. So if you're having the air brakes extended, you've got those there. Uh, they are absolutely covered in these ejector sort of pin things, but that means that uh, you can trim the ejector pins off rather than it actually being pushed directly onto the part. And I can just see on here, those have all got numbered well, at one, four, three, and two. So they've numbered those. Uh, so that's gonna be in line with the engines. So what looks like simple rectangles, chances are, are gonna be slightly tapered. So it's just gonna make sure you're gonna get them in the right place. Uh, coming on to, we'll do this one. This looks like the landing gear sprue. So here you've got the landing gear doors. You've of course got the landing gear itself, which does actually look quite plain. But to be honest, it's 1950s technology, big heavy plane, big heavy landing gear, quite cumbersome. Uh, I'm sure you could probably scratch build, maybe just run a few hydraulic lines down just to add a little bit of detail. But I've got to admit, it does look quite plain and simple. But looking at sort of like the, the wheels, you do have a nice sort of recessed detail in the wheels. So I'm sure if there were to have been detail on that, that would be captured. So it looks plain probably because it is plain and of course you've got the access ladder as well so landing gear tick that's looking good and again you can see there's quite a few of these um pins that will need to be removed but that's just making sure that they don't actually impede and leave um ejector pin markings on the part itself so uh you know for big sprues airfix have really thought about how they're actually going to be producing it not just how the model's made and again, looking at it here, we've got all the engine nozzles as well. There's the little jig that you'd cut off just to make sure when you're putting those nozzles on that they do come out at square. And there's the tailpiece as well with yeah, the recessed uh, engraved panel lines on there, quite fine. And actually, looking on the rear of these pieces, these have all got uh, numbers and codes on there. So three, four, one and two again, so the engine numbers and then SMP for port and starboard. So that's good. They've um, they've realized that quite a few of these parts, if you take them off, as I tend to do, um, and then you just have a pile of parts there, they're gonna look quite similar. So they have made sure that you can, even if you don't keep note of the different part numbers, you can still use a bit of logic to re um, make sure that you assemble them in the correct place. Because I'm sure the tolerances uh, would make it look correct, but they wouldn't quite fit if you've tried to put them in the wrong position. So if anyone actually saw, finds out that they're having gaps when building it, there shouldn't be any gaps. So if you find out you've got gaps, um, check. <laughs> make sure that you're uh, double check that you're using the right ones. And that brings us to actually this space here. There's obviously been something that's been snapped off here. Uh, now my thinking is what Airfix have done is they've obviously tooled up for a um, another version. Uh, so no doubt in the future, a another mark, another version, something else going to be coming out, which might just require a few extra sprues. So what they've done is they've um, taken off what might have lived here, and then maybe in the future when they release or um, basically maybe re-release this kit with a, another scheme. Uh, some other sort of armament, something else. Um, don't know what they've got in the pipeline. I'm sure we could speculate, but I'm sure that will then come with another sprue there. Uh, this is pretty much the last sprue of the actual um, main plane itself, main aircraft. And here we are, we've got the uh, tail fin and the various flaps and essentially moving parts here as well. So. Again, plenty of recessed details, and like the rest of it, it does actually feel quite big. In fact, if I just grab over here, 
a um, little, I mean, it's, this is little, especially in comparison to how big the Vulcan's going to be. This will just happily sit on one of the Vulcan's wings. This is a little Airfix um, 190. Uh, and uh, this actually is the starter kit, uh, not the paints that come in the starter kit, but the kit itself. So it's relatively new tooling, actually. Quite good detail to it. And I've got to say, just comparing the panel lines, those panel lines do seem a little bit bigger than the panel lines on here. But again, like on there, there's more finer details actually on the bottom. And that's going to be likewise, likewise with this Vulcan. Um, and I think they have just made those panel lines a little bit deeper just really to rub the noses of the people who actually got the old kit and spent all their time re-scribing those lines out. But, so we've got that there, and then you've got the fin or the rudder fin, and again, nice deep recessed panel lining in there. So that's going to be poseable. Of course, the instructions tell us how much we can move it around. Uh, on the back, there are plenty of ejection marks, but on the front, that hasn't actually impeded. There's no sink marks at all. Uh, no warping so that's good and quite a few of these flaps and slats are actually going to be poseable which would be quite nice you can have those in the drop position and again what we've done is uh, plenty of these ejector uh, little tabs which you cut off but it means when it's getting pushed out of the moulds uh, the, the machine's actually pushing on those not the parts as in where is there so that's quite good that's meaning that those surfaces are kept nice and smooth and flat they're going to be minimal filing what you will have to doing is to be trimming these little tabs off but once you've filed, taken them off and filed that off that's going to be on the edges that get mated together uh, make sure you file those down to get a smooth fit but there shouldn't really be any filing on any visible surfaces and let's come over to the final part and this is the blue steel missile so the final sprue in here and you're only going to be using this one if you're actually doing that first variant which had the blue steel good detail and again we've got some big on the inside ejector sort of marks but none of that has had any effect whatsoever on the outside there's no dips or anything in there and uh, that is actually looking pretty good so let's see that was the review and unboxing of air fixes i'll just bring the uh, cover of the box up here as well so that was the, pretty big you can just see me over it so this is air fixes new tools fresh out in 2021 the 1 to 70 second scale avro vulcan b2 uh, and that is reference number A12011. Now I'm going to be making this over the coming weeks. I, do, I don't just want to put it in the stash. It's one of the things where it's one thing to do an unboxing and a review. And I've got to say, first appearance, I'm a little bit worried about the panel lines might be a little bit too deep. However, I think by the time you actually get the paint on there, you run your primers, your coats, your top coats, decals, weathering, I think that's needed, but I do think that the builds that Airfix have actually done to demonstrate this, they've really gone to town on highlighting the panel lines. So I don't think I'll be going quite as much of that. And I think if you're gonna be doing it in the white or at least on the bottom of this color scheme as well, you're probably not gonna be wanting black panel liner as well. It's just gonna make it too obvious, but you do wanna show it off the detail. Otherwise, it's just gonna be one big triangle. Uh, if you're gonna be doing the anti-flash white variant, that would just be one big white triangle. So you are gonna to need to do something to break it up but it should take the weathering quite nicely as well. So it should be a good kit. So I'm gonna be building this. Hopefully I'm uh, gonna be putting that, I'm either gonna be live streaming it and, or I might just do the builds and show the highlights of it. I haven't decided yet, um, but I'm gonna be making a start on it quite soon. So therefore make sure you hit subscribe if you wanna see how it goes along, because it's one thing to do an unboxing and a review like that. It's another to actually start sticking plastic together and seeing how it actually goes together. And I think that's the critical thing on that. And of course in that we're gonna be looking at any problems that arise, any good parts, so you can actually see the whole build process. So again, make sure you hit subscribe on that one. I only discovered the other day actually, I've heard people mention it, never looked at it before. When you subscribe, a little bell comes up. If you click the little bell, what will then happen is you'll get notifications when the, uh, the videos actually go online, whether I'm actually editing and then uploading them or live streaming the build. Um, if it's the live stream, 
and you don't see it, they still hang around on YouTube so you can still watch it afterwards. You probably know that, uh, but for those that don't, it's always worth mentioning because some people uh, learn <laughs> the most obvious things. And again, that happens with modeling. Uh, something that seems really obvious to one person, it's not until you watch someone else do it on a video, you think that's a really good idea and you find out you're a bit late to the party on that one. So, um, at the moment, for 60 quid, I can say there's a lot of plastic in there and it's going to be a big model and it looks like it's going to go together really nicely. I cannot really comment on what it's like compared to the old one. I was going to get that kit and it was actually on the wish list, but I'd heard so many bad things about it and that you needed to get so many upgrades. It was kind of like quite a long way down on the wish list. So when Epix announced they were releasing this, I was quite quickly on there putting in the pre-order. It's taken a long time, but it's something that actually many people probably didn't think was ever going to happen. I genuinely didn't think Airfix would have done this. So when they announced that they were going to be retooling it for 2021, uh, it was a no-brainer. It had to be done. Looking forward to it. So uh, I'm going to crack on now and uh, hope you have enjoyed this. If you've got any questions, let me know. Um, also, of course, head over to robsmodels.co.uk where what I'll be doing is obviously putting this video, the builds, uh, videos of the builds will be going on there, more high resolution pictures of it as well. It's a good way for you to sort of um, read a little bit more as well because I'll be writing up a little bit of blurb so you can keep track of how things go on there. So I've been Rob, thanks for watching Rob's Models. Happy modelling and I'll catch up with you soon.